How's it going, everyone? Next up, we have Slacking. The lazy Pokemon has been terrifying everyone in spite of its constant loafing around ever since the third generation, where gym leader Norman used it to terrorize his own child. Chugga Conroy Slacking, affectionately named Teddy, was also unique in its ability to harness the power of the infamous nose laser. That's some YouTube history for you right there. And anyways, today we'll be examining if Slacking was able to overcome its own slothfulness to blast the competitive scene. So we ask, how good was slacking actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. In its debut generation, Slacking only ever used one set, Choice Band. And the power of Choice Band boosted its already gargantuan, higher than Groudon attack set to absolutely obscene levels. The move restriction wasn't at all a hindrance since it'd be switching out after it attacked anyway, thanks to Truant otherwise giving its opponent a completely free turn. This wasn't too different from other Choice Banders, which often had to immediately switch out after attacking since the opponent now knew which attack they were using and could resist it appropriately. Slacking was able to actually utilize this power since it wasn't slow and fragile. It boasted an excellent base 100 speed, the same as some OU tier titans such as Salamence and Zapdos, and it had a monstrous HP stat of 150 to go alongside quite a solid defense stat of 90. This meant it was naturally far more physically bulky than metagame staple Swampert, and there was nothing it couldn't hurt. With this choice of a normal stab either return or double edge, depending on how comfortable one was with recoil added on to the common sandstorm and spikes, slacking plowed through absolutely anything that didn't both resist it and have significant defensive investment. For instance, an offensive Jirachi, which is naturally quite bulky, regularly took over 50% from return. Slacking complemented its normal stab with Shadow Ball to exorcise Gengar and Earthquake to Jackhammer Steals and Tyranitar. The only Pokemon that could safely stand up to these moves was Skarmory, which Slacking could technically threaten with Focus Punch, but most Slacking users preferred the more reliable method of removing Skarm via Magneton. And since Focus Punch wasn't really useful for anything, Slacking dropped it and instead used Hyper Beam. And yes, you heard that right, there was genuine competitive use for Hyper Beam post Gen 1. It obviously wasn't something Slacking often spammed, but when it was low on health, it could fire one off as sort of a pseudo explosion to deal as much damage as possible before going down. And it did truly horrifying damage. It one hit KO's Aerodactyl by a mile, despite the resistance, doing a minimum of 111%. So now you may have the image in your mind of Slacking as basically the most terrifying thing in the advanced metagame. And you may be thinking, why is it that instead of slacking, I've heard more about Pokemon such as Metagross, who is far slower and whose choice banded meteor mashes off 135 attack are basically UU levels of power compared to slacking's 160 attack returns. Well, a lot of it has to do with slacking's middling defensive ability. It was definitely physically bulky, but it was a normal type. And the only move in OU it resisted was Snorlax's Shadow Ball. The reason Snorlax itself did not have this issue was because of its even more immense HP and special bulk that allowed it to easily eat the plethora of surfs, thunderbolts, and ice beams in OU. Plus, it could hold leftovers, which was incredibly crucial. Slacking's ability to switch into physical moves wasn't nearly as impressive, just off bulk alone, as well as the generally higher attack stats and base powers of physical moves. Not having leftovers not only compounded this issue, but also means it was vulnerable to the ever-present sandstorm, which wore it down quickly. These factors, in addition to its inability to invest invest in its bulk also means its naturally high HP couldn't make up for its low special defense, meaning offense gave it trouble from every direction. As far as defensive teams were concerned, Sandstorm and Spikes wearing slacking down meant if one could withstand the initial assault, common responses such as Gengar, Dugtrio, and Aerodactyl would be able to launch a powerful counterattack. And you might be wondering, why does that matter? Because slacking's job is to bring the pain, and surely it's not a problem if it can't switch in that often, as long as it leaves a sizable mark, right? Now here's the issue with that idea. Even an offensive choice bander's ability to switch in often with decent longevity was important because that is what allowed it to threaten teams over the course of a game. It's not enough to just be strong. Attacks will be resisted and the attacker will be forced out. And if you can't reliably force those attacks on the opponent again and again, you're not going to have a very useful Pokemon. This is in part why Tyranitar, Metagross, and Salamence are great choice banders. In addition to their numerous resistances alongside their great natural bulk, the former two are immune to 
Sandstorm, and Salamence is immune to Spikes. Flygon and Aerodactyl make up for being a little tougher to switch in, with immunity to both Sandstorm and Spikes. Conversely, Heracross is vulnerable to both Sandstorm and Spikes, with few good opportunities to safely switch in, and is far worse for it despite having stunning power. Having said all this, Slacking still had a niche, being a fine choice for some Magneton offense teams. It just didn't have the all-around excellence of its peers that would let it be a consistent choice in OU. It was severely hurt by the move Protect rising in popularity, which completely ruined Slacking and saw use on Pokemon that Slacking would otherwise threaten to destroy, namely Jirachi, Metagross, and Zapdos. However, the rise of slow-paced Claydol squads, where Protect is nowhere to be found, subtly signaled the return of Slacking's potential to terrorize teams like little else could. Overall, Slacking had severe flaws that required the deft hand of an elite advanced player to wield effectively, but the potential upside of its mind-boggling power was through the stratosphere. The fourth generation brought a faster and stronger metagame with Pokemon items and a physical special split. But Slacking was not going to be keeping up against Infernape, Scizor, the Rotom Appliances, and Draco Meteor Salamence. As such, Slacking wound up in Yu Yu. And while Slacking might initially seem way too powerful for a lower tier, with 690 attack stab returns, good bulk, and its excellent 100 speed, but the reality was Slacking was hardly anywhere near overwhelming, or even all that good. Its problems weren't with its power at all, of course. It was its prediction-reliant nature, making it difficult to dish out consistent damage, which it needed to do when it wasn't switching into battle repeatedly, thanks to Stealth Rock, no recovery, and its below-average special defense in a tier populated by special attackers. With the popularity of Registeel and Ghost paired together, Slacking wouldn't be able to easily spam return, and it was difficult to choose the correct coverage move when facing off. To make matters worse, Earthquake wouldn't even KO Registeel, and thanks to Truant, Slacking wouldn't be able to move the next turn. So Registeel could safely set up Stealth Rock or do whatever and then switch out to an Earthquake immune Pokemon the next turn. Even teams without the Steel and Ghost combo were generally able to handle Slacking. Tactics against it ranged from general physical defensive Pokemon, even those that lacked the normal resist such as Milotech, Weezing, and Donphan, to offensive teams packing faster Pokemon such as Scyther and Swellow. Between these factors and smaller things such as Miss Magius ensuring it always went a 1v1 thanks to Substitute, Slacking wasn't exactly bad, but it was incredibly tough to get consistent mileage out of, and as such wasn't used that much. Slacking dropped to Enu, where Regirock was incredibly common, which annoyed Slacking to no end, given the rock was even bulkier physically than its steel counterpart from Yu Yu. The tier also had other good rock types in Rhydon and Golem. As if it wasn't bad enough, Cradilly wasn't even weak to Earthquake, and had instant healing and recover. Enu also had multiple Earthquake immune ghost types in Haunter, Driftblim, and Mischievous, who were all solid Pokemon, and were commonly paired with the rocks, presenting Slacking with the same dilemma it had faced in Yu Yu. The existence of Dusclops and Sableye didn't help matters either. There were even miscellaneous physically bulky Pokemon that didn't even have to resist normal to help stave slacking off, like Gligar, Porygon 2, and Sandslash. And Yu also had no shortage of offense with which to make switching in a difficult task for slacking. So in conjunction with their tools to withstand slacking's assault, it wasn't difficult to play around the Great Oath. Slacking was definitely a potentially scary Pokemon, it just naturally had the deck stacked against it. So it wasn't the most effective or popular Pokemon, even in NU. And I'm sure you know what's coming next. With OU fueled by weather, dragons, fighting types, and Ferrothorn, Slacking stood no chance. And with Yu Yu resembling the previous generation's OU, Slacking also stood no chance. There was no hope for the new RU either, and offensive teams could easily play around it with offensive pressure while safely falling back on the excellent Golurk. But the main issue was Regenerator Tengro, which was basically the ultimate Slacking answer. It was able to withstand any hit with ease and effortlessly stay healthy at all times, thanks to the incredible regenerator as well as the many recovery moves at its disposal like leech seed giga drain and synthesis a tangrowth on the other team basically ensured slacking would never accomplish anything then eventually a lomomola gained regenerator and alongside wish and protect it was even more impossible to deal with if slacking could have hit them on consecutive turns it would have been a monstrous threat but such as the cruel tragedy of slacking and truant it fell to enu but was useless there too go lurk and a lomomola resided there as well as did evil like Tangela, which tanked Slacking's hits even better than its evolution. Leftovers be damned. The fifth generation was absolutely ruthless to Slacking, as there was no legitimate role for it to fill whatsoever.
And at this point, it was a foregone conclusion that OU, UU, and RU would pass Slacking by. And what with Mega's power creep and Slacking not getting any help, etc. Slacking being unfit for NU was not exactly surprising either. It wound up in the new lowest tier, PU. Its issues were reminiscent of its greatest plight in the fourth generation's lower tier, having to make the difficult prediction of going for Earthquake to hit rocks like Golem and Probo Pass versus going for Night Slash to hit ghosts like Gorgice and Mischievous. Since these Pokemon were effective and common, Slacking was passed over in favor of Pokemon such as Bufalon with similar offensive traits that could get by these roadblocks consistently while generally being better thanks to not offering opponents completely free turns and not being automatically completely ruined by the often used protect and substitute. In practice, there was nothing Slacking could do that would make it a better choice than Stoutland or Ursaring. Truant was just that bad. So, say la bad Pokemon. Gen 7 Z moves piled on the power creep, everything got better as Slacking got worse, and so on. Once again, it wasn't even usable in PU and it had the usual issues of being way too prediction reliant as well as being dumpstered by protect and substitute and of course the gigantic drawback of being complete and utter setup fodder for dangerous threats you didn't want to be giving entirely free turns to it was for this reason that slacking was never ever used by any serious pu player they preferred good pokemon instead namely kangaskhan and stoutland and despite not being normal type crabominable would do slacking's job better as well as would golurk lycanroc kabutops and even choice band victory bell this complete lack of use led slacking to drop to the lowest tiering placement possible for a fully evolved Pokemon, untiered, meaning it was not recommended for use in any Gen 7 tier, and fully cementing the Gorilla's place as one of the worst Pokemon in the game. Poor slacking. Higher attack stat than Rayquaza, but essentially just as good as Ledeon. And that's it, so how bad was slacking actually? Well, it actually wasn't bad in its debut generation, but this time we're asking how bad was slacking actually, because every subsequent generation saw it not only in the lowest tier possible, but also unable to have much of an impact even in those tiers alongside non-fully evolved Pokemon. Slacking sits alongside Regigigas, which if you haven't watched that video, you should go check it out, as a Pokemon with many similar traits and as one of the worst Pokemon in existence. Another really strong normal type with great stats, but a really bad ability. I, I, I don't get it either. Oh, also, we found no notable VGC presence whatsoever. A number of VGC players across the generations tried to skill swap its Truant off, just like Evice's Slowking in Pokemon Coliseum, but that always ended up gimmick key and ineffective. Also, side note, unlike Regigigas' slow start, Worry Seed actually doesn't affect Truant, so even gimmicks like that weren't an option for slacking. So the moral of the story is clearly that kids should overcome their laziness and go to school, because if they become Truants, they won't be viable in the competitive metagame. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive slacking? How do you think it would do if it didn't have Truant, like if it just had literally any other ability well besides slow start whatever it is let me know in the comments also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well and follow my crew on these social media platforms and that's all i got see you next time everyone